Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k Tyranids. Now in today's video we're going to be doing another one of our full reviews for one of the units from the Tyranids Index and today we're going to be talking about the Tyrant Guard. So we're going to be going through that data sheet and at the end of the video of course we'll be giving our Planet 40k rating. So once we've done that if you could kindly put your rating in at the end of the video at the comments that would be fantastic. But yeah let's crack on with this video. In fact before we do guys I finally got it I've got my Leviathan box set it was stuck in the, po in the post and I've not actually opened it yet so I'm going to crack on with that. I need to get on with that because I need to get some models done. Right, let's get into the Tyrant Guard. So on the rear of the date card we've got the following information. So first of all you can have between 3 and 6 Tyrant Guard, that's as it was. Every model was equipped with the Scything Talons and Rending Claws. In the previous edition I think it was like 2 Scything Talons and 2 Rending Claws, they've just kind of condensed everything now. And you've got the option of swapping out the Scything Talons and Renin Claws with a Bone Cleaver, Lash Whip and Renin Claws, or the Crushing Claws and Renin Claws. As for the points cost for the Tyrant Guard, they were 45 points in 9th edition, that's per model. They are now 95 points for 3, so that is effectively 31.666 points per model. So they are cheaper, and if you want to take 6, of course, that's 190 points. So you can only take them as a unit of 3 or a unit of 6. Then of course we've got the keywords of note, we've got infantry, which is all that's really important there, everything else is just as it is. Right, let's flip the data card over and check out the statistics. Movement of 6 inches, yeah, not the quickest, not the quickest. They may be slowing the attach leader down slightly with that, but we can get on with that, that's okay. The toughness is 8, it previously used to be 6, but toughness 8 is massive, especially for an infantry model, an infantry unit, that's only 30, what was it, 31.6 points a model. That's pretty impressive. I mean, that's monster level toughness right there. The save has gone up to a 3 plus armor save. It used to be a 2 plus, so slightly less resilient there. But with that toughness 8, I don't care, man. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Wounds 4, leadership 8 plus, and object control is 1, which is quite low. It's not their game, but that's what it is. So let's crack on with the weapon options. So we're going to start off with the bone cleaver, lash whip, and rending claws. We've got the option of any of these three here, so I'm just going to go in order. It's just easier for us to do. This has got the twin linked ability, so we're going to be re-rolling wound rolls. Pretty nice. Now, in the previous edition, the Bone Cleaver and the Rending Claws were separated. They've just merged everything together now. You can see in all three of the profiles, in fact, it's just the merging. So they've, it's also going to be the same with the stats. The stats have all been merged together. Yeah, it's not too much different now. So, Attack 3, Weapon Skill 3+, plus, Strength 5, minus 1 AP, and 2 damage. So, yes, there are some differences there, but again, it's merged. It's fine. Now, that, for me, is an anti... Is an anti-Space Marine weapon if you like, I always use them as an example because they've got two wounds apiece but there's plenty of other factions that have got similar similar statistics. You're hitting on a 3+, plus. you're probably wounded on a 3+, plus. sometimes a 4+, plus. depends on what unit you're going after. Minus 1 AP gives them half a chance of saving it but 2 damage will remove those kind of models. And you of course are twin linked as well so that does help with the, the wound roll. The second one is the Crushing Claws and the Rending Claws. This is anti elite infantry and can even break into like light vehicles and monster territory as well. So three attacks again, this time you're hitting on a 4 plus, so it is a minus one to hit effectively, but you're hitting worse, but you are strength 8 this time. So yeah, if you are going up against another unit of time guard for example, you're wounding them on a 4 plus, but we're tanky right, so it should really, you should be wounded on a 3 plus, but if you're going for vehicles and monsters, you might still be wounded on a 5 plus, it just depends on what it is. AP is minus 2, slightly better, and damage 2. So the AP in fact was minus 3 in the previous edition, so we've had an AP reset of course. I believe that's the only reset on this data sheet that we've actually got in terms of a worsened figure. But yeah, I quite like the Crushing Claws option. And the third one is a Simon Talons and Renner Claws option. This time you get 5 attacks, purely because of the Simon Talons, extra attacks there. Uh, Web Skill 3+, plus, Strength 5, minus 1 AP, 1 damage. So you get more attacks, the same strength as the Bone Cleaver option but only one damage, so this is against light infantry, or, you know, light infantry that have only got one wound, toughness 3, toughness 4, they're the kind of units you want to go for, not really toughness 5 because they're going to have more than one wound anyway, so at that point you may as well take the bone cleaver anyway, but anything less, the Siren Talons are the one, that's the anti-light infantry, that's your option there. So I do like the idea of the crushing claws the most, Yes, it's hit on a 4+, plus, but it's a versatile weapon. Hurts both infantry as well as assisting with some damage to vehicles and monsters. And of course, you're going to be putting this, this unit with either a Hive Tyrant or a Swarm Lord, maybe the Neuro Tyrant. So they're going to be doing the heavier work anyway. But all three are nice options to have. Really depends on 
your opponent's army, and of course if you know the opponent's army pre-game, it's going to make this selection much more easier. But if you don't know, that's why I prefer the Crushing Claws, because it's a little bit more versatile in game. If you go for the Scyvin Talons, and you go up against an elite army, then they're not going to do much. And likewise, if you go for the Bone Cleaver, and you go for an army that's just got loads of Guardsmen all over the place, again, it's not going to do, it's, it's overkill. So I like the Crushing Claws, because you can then start to go into vehicles and monsters as well. Right, so sticking with the weapons for a moment, what we need to also consider here is, well, a bit of, a bit of, Index synergy, if you like. First of all, we have got our Invasion High Fleet Detachment role, which is a hyper adaptation. And pre game, you're selecting either the, one of the following Swarming Instincts for the Sustain Hits 1 ability, Hyper Aggression for the Lethal Hits, or Hive Predators for the Precision ability. So, any hit rolls of a 6, you're going to be doing one of those. Of course, Sustain Hits is only Infantry and Swarm, but you, you already know this by now, guys. I put it on the screen for you in case you don't. So, you need to take that into consideration when selecting your weapons, or if you already know your army you're going up against, you can take that into consideration there as well. But if you are, for example, taking the Crushing Claws, maybe you're, I mean, all three of them are probably a decent option there. So, again, it opens up the door for a bit more versatility in game. But if you are taking the Siren Talons, which are an anti infantry weapon, then the likelihood is you're going for the Swarming Instincts option for Sustain Hits 1. 5 attacks, maybe you get 6, you're going to get more hits there. Also, you've got to take into consideration the stratagems. There is one in particular that I want to talk about at this moment in time. In fact, there's two. There's two. We're going to do a little bit of synergy combination here. Synaptic Insight for one command point in your command phase. And if you're within Synapse, which you will be, and you pretty much always will be, and I'll explain why in a moment, you could select one of those hyper adaptations until the end of the battle round. So even if you've unlocked... Hyper aggression, for example, from the hyper adaptations, and you've got that all game, and you're going up against a unit of. It could be a character unit, in fact. Maybe you've got a character within a unit, and you really wanted the precision ability. For one command point, you could unlock the precision ability as well, but you're still keeping the hyper aggression lethal hits ability. So it could be a character monster, so you'll be getting lethal hits as well as the precision ability. Also, the second strategy I wanted to mention in this combination is Adrenal Surge. Now, it is pricey, it's two command points. I don't like the fact that it's so pricey, but in any of the fight phases, you select up to two Tyran units that are within Synapse range, which they will be, and then until the end of the phase, critical hits are scored on a 5 plus, not a 6 plus. So why that is important, again, if we go back to our hyper adaptations, these, have, these abilities, of course, are triggered on a 6 plus, or on a critical hit, sorry. They are triggered on a critical hit, and if we turn in the critical hits to 5 pluses rather than 6 pluses, with a unit of 6 of these guys, you can either get a lot of sustained hits, or a lot of lethal hits, or a lot of precision hits. So it's all going to stack up, and yeah, if you're using the other stratagem to, uh, to unlock two of those abilities, even better. We then come on to the ability side of the data card. Guardian Organism, this is probably one of the main things about this, this unit. While a character is leading the unit, that character effectively gets the 5 plus feel no pain save ability. So again, there's three options here. You've got the Swarm Lord, you've got the Hive Tyrant, and you've got the Neuro Tyrant. One of those models will be leading the Tyrant Guard, and you're giving that model a 5 plus feel no pain save. Now, there are other ways of giving them the feel no pain save, so that's just going to cost you enhancements, or command points, or whatever. So you're doing this with the unit, with the Tyrant Guard, so it's effectively, it's not free because you're paying for the unit, but the unit's pretty good, so that's okay. And if you actually wanted to give your Tyrant Guard the Feel No Pain save, well, you can with the Rapid Regeneration strategy, and that's also just one command point, and it will last until the end of the phase. So just after your opponent selects them as a target in the shooting phase or the fight phase, you're going to get the 6 plus Feel No Pain save ability. However, if you're within Synapse, which you will be, then you're going to get the 5 plus Feel No Pain save. So not only will the Tyrant Guard get the 5 plus Feel No Pain save, the leader of the pack will also have the 5 plus Bruno Pain save because of the Guardian Organisms. I hope you've kept up with all that, there's a nice bit of synergy there. But sticking with synergy in fact, let's talk about those three units that can lead the Tyrant Guard. The first one of course is the Hive Tyrant. Hive Tyrant I think is the best HQ we've got. He's got the option of enhancements because it's not an epic hero. And one of them in particular, let's talk about two of them in fact, one of them is Alien Cunning. So you can redeploy up to three units, it could potentially be the Hive Tyrant with the Tyrant Guard. You deploy them on the left flank, your opponent counter deploys, and then you literally move them and put them on the right flank. Your opponent now is jammed, they don't know what to do. You've also got the Perfectly Adapted, which is, it only works for the Hive Tyrant, but there are a few, a few parts to the ability, to the enhancement that will work with the entire unit. So let's read it. Two new models only, once per turn, you can re-roll one hit roll, one moon roll, one damage roll. One advanced roll, one charge roll, and saving throw made for the bearer. 
So some of those will relate to the unit, for example, the advance roll, maybe it's the charge roll. In fact, those are the, probably the two that will relate to the, the, the entire unit, if you're advancing with the whole unit or if you're charging with the whole unit. So that can be relatable to the Tyrant Guard. As for his actually actual ability, well, he's got Will of the High Mind, which is probably the best ability in the, in the index. It's in his unit within 12 inches, which could be his own unit. Get to use a stratagem for free, even if you've already used that stratagem this phase. Now, going back to that stratagem, which was Adrenal Surge for two command points, remember the expensive one to unlock critical hits on a 5+, plus. maybe you're using that one and completely free. So that is how you get around that. The other option is the Swarm Lord. I think he looks so epic and yeah, even though I prefer the Hive Tyrant in, in game, I just love the look of the Swarm Lord. He looks like an absolute beast. Now he doesn't have all the abilities that the Hive Tyrant has and he can't take enhancements of course, but he's just an absolute beast to, to you know, in terms of his range attacks, his melee attacks, he's gaining you CP every turn. You can increase the cost of your opponent's stratagems by one. He's increasing the synapse range, so you want to keep him alive because he's buffing your you, your army and he's debuffing your opponent's army. So having the bodyguard unit with toughness, a giving him the the invun save, no, not the invun save, giving him the feel no pain save, is definitely a key play when you've taken a swarm lord. And the third option, of course, is the neuro tyrant, which is the new tempered edition tyrant. One of his abilities in particular will interact with the tyrant guard, which is no lash, while he's leading the unit. You're going to add one to the hit rolls, and if the target unit is battle shocked, add one to the room rolls as well. So bearing in mind the crushing claws you're hitting on a 4 plus naturally, that goes to a 3 plus, and all the other ones, the scything talons and the, the bone cleavers, they were hitting on a 3 plus, so they'll be going to a 2 plus. So you're hitting much better with that, much, much better. He's also got some other abilities, psychic terror, synapse relays, that, that pretty much relates to shadow and the warp and synapse, not so much for the time of guard. And before we get into a little bit more of the tactical element, let's talk about one more stratagem, which is Death Frenzy. In any of the fight phases, if you do lose models from this unit, you use a stratagem for one command point on a 4+, plus. you don't remove them from play, they still get to fight before you actually remove them. That can get you out of, can get you out of jail, that one. So I would definitely keep that up your sleeve. So what is the battlefield role for the Tyrant Guard? Well, clearly they are providing that 5+, plus feel no pain save for your Hive Tyrant, your Swarm Lord, or your Neuro Tyrant. That's the main, main purpose for these guys. But also they're backing them up with either anti-infantry attacks or maybe it's the strength eight crushing claws. Because what if your Hive Tyrant gets surrounded by, I don't know, Orc Boys? Then he's going to need some assistance, right? He's going to need some assistance. So having those, those Tyrant Guard being able to fend off all those Orc Boys from attacking your Hive Tyrant while your Hive Tyrant is taking out something bigger, maybe the Orc War Boss, whatever they've got. So you're literally protecting him. Now bear in mind these guys are now toughness 8, which I just think is crazy good. They're virtually monster stats, aren't they? So that means things such as, you know, your standard bolt guns are going to really struggle to take these guys down. They're going to need a, a 6 plus in terms of... They're, they're going to need a 6 to wound, aren't they? Just to take down these things. In fact, that's just to inflict a wound. We're still going to get a save on that, aren't we? Now they don't need to think so much about primary objectives. That's not their game. They need to just follow the, the, the Hive Tyrant, Swarm Lord, go and murder stuff, go and kill stuff. They don't need to think about primaries. As for secondaries, maybe you're looking at assassination. You can maybe use the epic challenge stratagem with your, you know, the leader, whether it's the swarm lord again. Maybe you're going for bring it down if you're hunting monsters and vehicles. Maybe there's other secondaries such as area denial. Maybe there's overwhelming force. Now, of course, some of these are not fixed, so it is a little bit luck of the draw in terms of 10th edition cards, but there are quite a lot that are quite suitable for this unit. So let's break into the pros and cons for the Tyrant Guard. Starting with the pros, the Guardian Organism, of course, the 5 plus feel now pain save for your leader in the unit. They are now Toughness 8, which I think is epic. They've got the weapon options pre-game. Well, not pre-game. You select them in your list, of course. But there's three options to select from, so that's going to tailor to your list and your needs for your, the rest of your army. They're always going to be within Synapse, which we forgot to mention earlier in the video, actually. Because they're with the Hive Tyrant or your Neuro Tyrant or your Swarm Lord, all three of those models have the Synapse keyword. So that means no matter what, the Tyrant Guard will always be within Synapse. Pretty nice. Um, they're cheaper this edition, 31 point, I can't remember what it is that it was now, but 90 points for three is much cheaper than it was in the 9th edition. And the Hive Tyrant, as well as the Neuro Tyrant, can take enhancements. As for the cons, they've lost their 2 plus armor saves from 9th edition, which was nice, but they're toughness 8, so I kind of forgive that. 
They've got no ranged attacks, of course. They're only in melee. They've only got that one face to do the damage. You could potentially select the wrong weapon. Depends on if you're going in a game blind, which most of tournament games are going to be like that. You only know what you're coming up against when you come up against it. If you've selected the wrong weapon, then yeah, it's not a good day for you. It's going to be a long day. And finally, the object control for the points cost is kind of low. I know that isn't their game, that's not their style, but for the points cost, you'd think they'd get a bit more than that. So we're getting onto the video where we're putting our Planet 40k rating in for the Tyrant Guard, and this one is an easy one. I'm going with the 5 star. The 5 star is simply there because I believe our best unit is the Hive Tyrant. If it isn't the Hive Tyrant, you're taking the Swarm Lord, and you're either one of those, you can take the Tyrant Guard to give the Fiona Pain save to one of those models, and that makes these guys virtually an auto-include for me. So, 5 star from me today, let me know yours down in the comments below. So guys, that is it from me today. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.